Hey, it's Jennifer, and I'm here with a meatloaf. Um, we're going to make healthy turkey meatloaf, and this recipe is thanks to my chef from Chicago, Diane. Um, while I lived in Chicago, uh, I moved four years ago, I had a cooking business with her. She was my chef, and um, we created most of the recipes together, a joint effort, um, trying to keep them healthy, and she made them taste good. So, like I said, today is turkey meatloaf. And I will show you the ingredients, but the ingredients can be varied. So a lot of times I like making this when I have some random vegetables around um, that I don't really know what I want to do with. And you can kind of stick these in there without changing a lot of the flavor of it. And it's nice because then you're getting in vegetables, especially if you have kids or something. It gets them to eat some more vegetables that they might not typically eat. Also, um, the carb that I'm going to use today is going to be quinoa. It's cooked quinoa. Um, but feel free to use uncooked oatmeal um, or even brown rice would work. Cooked brown rice would work as well as a binder. So here are the ingredients you're going to need. It's a lot today. So we will start with um, a pound of ground turkey. As you know, I like cooking with the pound of ground turkey because that's going to cook me four meals. So because I know this is going to equal four meals, I'm going to use one cup of the cooked quinoa. I'm just going to mix that right in there with it one egg. Uh, these two are going to be working as our binders. Now I have some fresh herbs on hand. Um, I have a little bit of basil here and some flat leaf parsley. If you're going to use some fresh herbs, about a tablespoon, a little over a tablespoon of each would be good. I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of dry herbs. If I didn't have the, the, the fresh, I would also use about a teaspoon of those dry herbs. So I'm going to do oregano, and this is just a mixture, an Italian herb grinder. I'll probably just uh, have a couple shakes of that in there as well. I will mince up the garlic, and I'm going to, this is about half of a small onion or a quarter of a large one. Uh, red pepper today, and I'm actually going to put some green beans in there. So I'm going to chop these all pretty good. I will show you the size, and uh, we'll get to mixing. Everything is chopped now. I chop things to about this size. I have to hand chop everything because I don't have a food processor. I was talking about using alternate vegetables. Sometimes I'll throw some broccoli or cauliflower in here if I have that on hand. Uh, so I'm going to put all of this into the mixture. These are minced pretty fine. Uh, the cup of quinoa, the egg, a tablespoon of the oregano, about a quarter tablespoon of the black pepper, just a little bit of salt and a little bit of that Italian grinder. Now before I start mixing it, I put on some gloves. Uh, <laughs> you can do your bare hands if you want, but having some gloves on hand is always nice, especially when you're cutting peppers, garlic, onion. Um, having these gloves, as long as they're food safe, is, is really a great way to make your hands not smell, but also you can get down and dirty in the food without, you know, it causing some issues. Uh, the pan that I'm going to use is actually already set up in four loaves. I'm going to just cook it with cooking spray. Also, uh, before you start cooking, preheat your oven to 350. These are set. As you can see, my little loaf pan. It's pretty nice. Uh, it will just obviously give me four, four complete meals. Um, now I'm going to put this on top. It's a reduced sugar tomato ketchup. There's one gram of sugar per serving. If I were dieting for a bodybuilding show, let's say, I wouldn't use it. But I'm just trying to eat healthier, eat cleaner. Um, in typical everyday life, I would probably just use regular ketchup. Reg regular ketchup has like four grams of sugar per serving. And we're not using very much, but it will give a little extra flavor, a little extra kick. If you don't like the ketchup, you obviously don't have to add it. And just give it a squirt, and you might want to spread it around once you get it on there. Alright, let me spread that around. Now you're just going to pop it in the oven and let it cook. It depends on what size pan you're using, how long you're going to have to let it cook. But because it's ground turkey meat, you want to make sure that it is cooked all the way through. Those vegetables are mainly water, so a lot of water is going to be released. I wouldn't even check them for at least 30 minutes. So I'll check back with you in 30 minutes and we'll see how it's going. All right, these look finished. Uh, they feel finished too. They're nice and firm. Uh, I had them cooking about 40 minutes, so a little bit longer than 30. And 
Just keep in mind, if you want a leaner version of this, because we aren't rinsing the ground turkey, just you can get the 99% um, fat-free ground turkey. Again, I use 93% for this, so there is just a little bit of fat on the top. Sometimes I'll wipe that off, just because we aren't draining it like we usually do when we brown it. But that's it. Uh, voila, you're finished. Enjoy.